ピードにつながるための解説 AGM 編 Once that club changes direction, once it starts to downswing until it reaches the golf ball, we have a very small window of time. Pro is in blue, our amateur is red, and the angles you're seeing are what a lot of people consider the lag angle. It's that lead arm to shaft angle. It's really easy to see here from the face on view. This angle really depends on how the golfer flexes that lead wrist or extends that lead wrist. But the really important point we want to focus on in this video, we call this true lag, is right here at this shaft parallel spot. So they're kind of going over their definition of lag. So their opinion is it's going to be more so right around what we call position six. A lot of people, when they look at lag, they typically look at it around like P4 to P5. But that angle, what they're trying to say, can be deceptive because you could look like you're in quite a good spot at that position. However, as you start to approach the golf ball, you could be early releasing quite a lot and actually not have the handle first and not really get the benefits of lag. So what they're saying, which is called true lag in their system, and then also not only is it that when you're checking for lag, but it's also where the hands are positioned relative to the trail leg. Because what they're going to say is this angle right here created between the arm and the club shaft. But amongst pros, this angle can actually vary a decent amount. However, the position of where the hands are relative to the leg is definitely the consistent part. So this is kind of when they look at true lag and you know what you should be measuring at what position. This is where they want you to measure at. Speed につながるための解説 AGM 編 So the first element that we want to look at as far as creating lag goes, useful lag, is club face on the downswing. So I know in Japan as well as in America, whenever someone sees like a cupped wrist at the top or an extended wrist, they typically think that's a really bad thing. However, a cupped wrist by itself is not a bad thing. It's more so what does your face angle look like relative to that cupped wrist is more so what they're talking about. So they say that club face angle is going to be a very important checkpoint when it comes to are you going to be able to get lag or not, and I heavily agree with this. This amateur golfer has a cup wrist, and the toe of the club is more so at a 90 degree angle at the top, so this would be a really open face angle as well. So in this certain scenario, this extended wrist is a bad thing. So what they're also trying to say is, just because you have a cup wrist or an extended wrist, that doesn't mean that you're automatically not going to get lag. So if you had a cup wrist, and then looked a little bit more like the pro golfer, then that would be okay to have a cup wrist in that position at the top. So the main point and the purpose they're trying to talk about is at the top of the swing as well as throughout the downswing, if you can have the face angle in a slightly stronger position or more so neutral position, you'll have a much better chance to get lag. And again, whatever wrist angle you have is not necessarily as important as long as your face angle's in a good spot. That's the main point right there. 